hi and welcome back to the garden. I told you guys I'd see you soon in the garden and here we are. It's another rainy, yucky day and I've been wanting to get in the garden. I really can't. So I'm way behind. Everybody's way behind. No one has gotten their gardens in or anything. You know, you don't have to have a perfect garden because I want you guys to look right here at one of my beds. Does this look perfect to you? I got grasses growing up in here. I have tons of wild weeds and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some of these wild weeds and you know don't be hard on yourself because you know what you do what you can do and good things will come of it and I'm going to kind of show you some of my tricks that I do and hacks I guess you could say garden hacks that help me not have to do as much work when it comes to planting because we live off grid I don't have electricity into my greenhouse so I don't have heat in there for me to grow things so I got really good at seeding things you know just putting direct seeding and I'm going to show you some of my ways I get around things so that I can grow things very successfully here. When Doug and I first started 13 years ago, when we moved here, we were, went in all, all the way. You know, we decided to have a 10,000 square foot garden because we wanted to mimic the way the Amish were doing their gardens. And we plowed it up. We had a team of Belgians. We plowed it up. 10,000 square feet. Never gardened in our life before. Mind you that most Amish have, you know, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 children that help with the gardening. It was just Doug and I, and we didn't even know what we were doing. So that was labor intensive for us. It was really hard. We had a drought that first year and we didn't have any access to water. We were hauling it from our pond. So needless to say, I learned from that one. And then just trying and struggling and trying to figure out what will work for our garden to make it easier. So then we went to the back to Eden method where you use mulch and like wood chips and we put them down and it was no tilling at all. And then everyone said, oh, it'll be great. This takes a little bit while for the wood chips to break down. And then it's easy to pull the weeds out. It's just wonderful because it mimics nature. Well, we did that to a whole back part of our garden here. The whole half of this garden was the back to Eden. Well, basically our soil ended up being um, like anaerobic and nothing grew. I mean, it was terrible trying to do everything we could do by amendments. I had comfrey. I mean, it was a lot, but you know, I can't wait two, three years <laughs> for me to start planting. So we had a couple raised beds and I absolutely love these. I can sit on them. It is so easy for me. I can sit on there. I can reach across because most of them are like four foot wide by, you know, six, eight, 10 feet long. And I can just do my gardening and it's so easy for me. Doug made these raised beds many, many years ago, and I am never looking back again. This is the only way I'm gonna garden. I am not a perfect gardener. If you're gonna come to my house, I'm gonna have weeds in my garden. It's not gonna look beautiful like a lot of these gardens you see on YouTube. I mean, it'll look okay. You know, I have my chores around here. I have to cook, I have to clean, and you have to do a lot of other things. I mean, everyone's different. You guys are gonna do what you need to do and what works for you. These things that we might call noxious weeds, but really these, wild herbs, we want to call them, are more nutritious than the actual herbs that you might get at the store or some of the lettuces and greens that you get from the store because they're so highly concentrated. So as I'm cleaning up my beds today, I'm going to go through and show you some of these wonderful things that I have in here and, and what I'm going to do with them. Come a little closer. So what we call this, this wild herb, this is called purple dead nettle. And it's one of the first things you see in the fields, first time of spring, right when spring is beginning. The beautiful purple flowers. A lot of people get frustrated with it because it grows everywhere in your open fields, maybe in the creases where the concrete is. You might see it all over the place. Um, and it is in the mint family. It has a square stem, that's how you know. And this is something that is edible. So the leaves, the greens are similar to, you know, like some of your spinaches, your kale, and they have a, just a, a very nice taste. A lot of people will take them and saute them with a little butter. You might just take some of the leaves off and chop them up and put them in your salads. Um, I know a lot of the Amish, they'll get some of this around this time of year in spring because normally this is when it's gonna grow in early spring. By later spring, summer, it's gonna be gone. But um, they'll put it in a tea and they like to do it. They say it helps with their allergies. And the way I remember the dead nettle is because it has a little pointy leaf, like it's a knife. So that's how I think it's dead nettle, because it's a knife. They also call this red dead nettle too. 
So what I'll do is I'm just going to harvest some of these. I'm not going to let them go to waste and put them in our salad tonight. And then I'll clean a few off and put them in a, a bowl and then I'll save them for tomorrow. Now, let's look over here because there's one that looks very similar to the dead nettle and it's right next to it. So look at this one. They look similar. A lot of people get mixed up between the two, but there is a difference. So let's look. So this is the dead nettle, dead nettle. So it looks like a pointy knife. This one's called henbit, H-E-N-B-I-T. It's scalloped, see how it's scalloped? And it got its name because the chickens used to scratch in it and I think that's probably how it's got its name. And it's purple, pinkish purple. And it's the same thing, these leaves taste very good too. And they have a really nice flavor. If I had to pick between the two, they're kind of similar but just a little bit different. I don't know, they're pretty, they're pretty similar. They both taste pretty good. But they're good to mix and put in your salads. And this is also has a square stem. It's in the mint family also. They're loaded in vitamin A, vitamin C, it has iron, vitamin K. So all these wonderful things. And something, you could use them as an infusion in a tea if you want to drink it, put some in your salad. Or I know a lot of people just take some of this out of their garden, chop it up and feed it to your chickens. Especially a lot of you guys that are starting to raise some of these young chicks. Possibly they're not ready, they're, they're not on the grass yet or anything. You can chop some of it up, put it in with your young chicks and it's a wonderful treat for them and it's highly nutritious. So don't let this stuff go to waste. This is not a weed. It's a wild, wonderful, edible herb. And then let me show you what else is in my bed. This is loaded with lots of good stuff. All right, so look at here. Oh, I have it growing all over. This is called lamb's quarter. This is lamb's quarter. Sometimes they call it goose foot because it looks like a goose foot. See how that is? But I think a really good name that we call it is wild spinach. It's more nutritious than the spinach you'd buy at the stores. And the cool thing about it, if you feel it, you need feel-a-vision today. Like when I feel the top of it, it almost feels like there's grit or sand on top of it. Through its little roots, it'll absorb and suck up all the minerals from the earth and they kind of come up here. And you'll find that white powdery, it'll be underneath the leaves on the very top. Let's see if I can find some. We've been having a lot of rain, so a lot of it's already washed off. But you can see, even see how it's kind of white a little bit there. But lamb's quarter, these are younger, so of course, when they're young like this, they're much more tender. And it has amazing, amazing flavor. So you would use this any way you would use spinach. So you could saute it. I like to get a bunch of this, the leaves, and I'll just chop them up, put it in a pan, crack some eggs with it, with a little butter and some salt and pepper, and it tastes amazing. So that's something else. Now the one thing you do have to look at, if you are sensitive to greens that have a lot of oxalate acid, you know, like your, um, Swiss chard and, and your spinach, th this is gonna have oxalate in it too. So just, you know, be aware of that if you are sensitive to that. So the lamb's quarter is another one. So these are all, I have quite a few of them growing in here. I'm gonna pull these out, I'm gonna save these, I'll rinse them off, put them in a container, and then I'll enjoy them for the next few days. Everyone make a wish. <laughs> so, and of course, here you go. The last one in my little garden here are your dandelions. I've done tons of videos on dandelions, lots of videos. I've given you lots of uses. We'll put a bunch of pictures of the videos here on the screen for you. Um, but dandelions are amazing. You can make a wonderful iced tea out of this with some honey, it's wonderful. The leaves are wonderful. You can cook, you can eat them raw. It's a wonderful bitter green, helps with digestion. Your dandelions, they're one of the first things to pop up in the springtime. So, you know, way back when, hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, you know, during the winter months, food is scarce. You can't grow anything, especially if you live in a climate that gets cold and it freezes. So this is what would help people. During those winter months, they didn't have all that wonderful nutrition. And then they were kind of suffering. And then spring comes, this is the first thing to pop up. I know the old timers, you hear stories all the time. You start with your dandelion salad, you have your dandelion tea, you have your dandelion wine, you have your dandelion jelly, and they would make these into greens with some butter and some garlic, and they would just really eat them up, giving that nutrition and health back to the family because they were suffering through those winter months. 
So there's reasons that all this stuff is put here. You know, it's wonderful that we have all this at our fingertips. There you go. I would highly recommend you guys get some books on foraging. You can get more, um, you know, accustomed to some of these plants around in your area. And then that way you can learn more and more that besides growing in your garden, you have a lot of this stuff that just grows naturally. And the wonderful thing that I love about these early spring wild herbs, like the dead nettle and your dandelions and then the henbet is they're flowers, they flower. So when you see these flowers, your bees, they're waiting for some food. So these are some of the first things that the bees are gonna be hunting for. And actually, they like the dead nettle and the henbet a little bit better than the dandelions, believe it or not. We love all these things. So don't get upset when you see them. You wanna embrace them, because if you don't wanna eat them, give them to your chickens. Or maybe if you know someone who has chickens, or maybe somebody else might want them, all right? So I just want to show you kind of some of the things that I do around here because I'm, I'm a lazy gardener. <laughs> so come on over here, I'll show you. Of course, I love perennials. So here's my oregano. It just keeps coming back every year. And then I started growing borage. This is borage right here. And they do call it cucumber lettuce. Hello, Mario. You can't be in the garden. So they call it cucumber lettuce because it tastes like cucumber. It has this beautiful purpley flower. And I grew it two years ago. It's an annual, but I've never replanted it again because I just kind of let some of them go to seed and I just let it drop. So right now, wherever some of them dropped, I have some borage right there. And also, look what else I did. I love dill. So I have dill. I just let it go to seed, I just let it go, and I let it pop up wherever it comes up. And if it's in the way, and it gets in the way, I'll just pull it out and replant it somewhere else. So I kind of let Mother Nature do its thing. I let my things go to seed. Wherever they drop, I'll keep them if they land someplace good in my garden. Otherwise, I'll just pull them out and I'll transplant them. Now in my other bed, I do love lamb's quarter and I use it a lot. So as you can see, there's a lot of lamb's quarter growing around in here. So I'll use a lot of these up. I'll use them as spinach. What I do is, for me, instead of just putting seed by seed by seed, certain things that I do, like my greens, some of my lettuces, and a, my a radishes, I'll just kind of get my soil good and I'll just throw the seeds out and then I have my radishes right here and I kind of make it easy that way. So today I'm rambling on, but I have to tell you a story that happened yesterday with Mario. I had to run into town. I get out of my truck and I look at my truck and on the tire I see Mario. And this is like, you know, seven, eight miles away. And so he had gotten on the tire, you know, underneath the car. He had ridden the whole way and it was raining. We we're going down bumps. And he was fine that I got him. Luckily he didn't run away, so he survived. So he's a little lovey today. So in the comments below, say, welcome back, Mario. We're glad you're safe. <laughs> All right, you be a good boy, okay? Now he won't leave me alone. <laughs> I, he needs a little love. Now over here, this looks kind of similar to dill. It's not dill though. You're gonna start to see, eventually it's gonna get a pretty little flower that's white with yellow on the inside. And it's called chamomile. Now chamomile is a plant that has a teeny tiny powdery type seed. And when it goes to seed, it goes everywhere. You'll find it all over the place. So I'll find it wherever I find it and then I'll just pull it out because it's really hardy. I can put it in pots and put it in a big bed. I can put it wherever I want it. And so right now I decided to keep this one right here. And then if I find other ones, like I think here's another one right over here, I'll probably pull that out and I'm gonna move that somewhere, maybe in some of my herb beds over, over to my uh, left here.
So my rule is when I plant in any of my beds, I have to have herbs in all of my beds. And parsley is a very wonderful one that's very cold tolerant. It, it can make it through winter for a lot of you guys and uh, it grows wonderfully in this cooler, in the cooler temperatures. So parsley is one of my favorites. I have that everywhere. See this? So I think it's time to get in the garden. So for some of you guys, I just kind of wanted to get on here. This really isn't a video about anything. It's just like to encourage you that, you know, if you throw some seeds out, something's gonna grow. And if you let your stuff go to seed at the end of the season, when the next season comes, it's gonna grow and pop up. So I let that happen. I let some of my flowers reseed. I let my herbs reseed. And then I'll pull out the ones I want and then I'm gonna reuse them and put them where I want them to go. And then that way I don't have to worry about a greenhouse. Um, if you don't have a greenhouse, you don't have to worry about it. So it works out really, really well. Just kind of let nature do its work. It's not that complicated. You need to come out of here. He's clingy. You almost got killed yesterday, didn't you? You can do it. I will look forward to seeing you on the next video and have an awesome day and I'll talk to you soon, bye.